Hey, it's Alicia Main, the Animal Healer, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking with Liz Witter of Beyond the Fence Sanctuary, who's out in Kanab, Utah, and Liz has a really awesome mule named Merrick, and Merrick was a Grand Canyon mule. He would bring people up and down the canyon, and he's having some physical issues go on. So Liz, would you share with us, like, A, thank you for being on with us. And yeah. would you share what's what's going on, what's happening with Merrick? Packing mules and horses is a part of our American heritage and today is a dying art. I personally worked with some of the best packing professionals in the US and I've done a little bit of packing with my own with my own animals. So I have a little bit of experience and I know firsthand what it costs the animal. What makes a packer great is the almost addictive attention to detail of their animals, which is both their love and livelihood. Mules and horses that work in this manner have really tough lives. Long, challenging hours with a great sacrifice to their bodies. The lucky few reap the benefits of mountain travel by having the opportunity to graze freely in pristine mountain meadows and to drink from mountain streams certainly the closest experience to being a wild animal. The other animals may be the unlucky. They're often the day ride, quote unquote day ride, horses, mules, and or, you know, the ones who are forced to march up and down, say the Grand Canyon. These guys carry hundreds of pounds of gear, let alone human beings. They get every good mile squeezed out for profit. Usually, at the end of their careers, they're too crippled to really walk at all. I have three rescues from the Grand Canyon, two mules and a horse, and only one of the mules could actually go on even just like a regular walk. You know, he's worked incredibly hard his whole life. When he comes here, and this is a sanctuary, and all of the animals here, they are free to choose what they do and don't want to do. They're free to be like, we rarely use halters if we have to, only if we have to, and we're constantly asking them if they want to do this or they don't. And we found out that most of the time they're like, no, we don't really, like we want to groom with you and that's right now kind of it. And that's okay. I think he kind of is waiting for the ball to drop. Like mm -hmm. what's happening? Why don't you guys go to work every day? I, I just feel like he's questioning what is like, what we're about still and he's waiting I adopted adopted him last fall and when I adopted him I had the intention of he's still going to be able to go on some trails we'll do some pack work like really light work and they assured me that that was the case that he was still going to be able to do that but he had a slight injury and that turns out he has a pretty significant injury. So he's got a pretty significant limp. He actually, I think he had, they didn't tell me this and I haven't asked them, but some kind of really significant injury. Cause when he eats, his jaw pops and his hip is atrophied. He has a broken hip that never repaired itself fully. So you can see he, he walks around fine. He eats fine, he lays down, he drinks, he, he, you know, really connects to the other horses and the other mule. He's, when he stands, he's only standing on the one back right leg um, and his leg kind of hangs down. And so there's a lot of challenges with an injury like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, I had asked him, as he started walking, I was like, hey, Merrick, are you okay if we connect in with you? Like, would you stand, you know, and just kind of hang out for us? And he's very curious. He's like, so what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna gently put each one of my thumbs about one inch off uh, to the center of his spine, one on each side. I'm gonna start up as, at his occiput. So his occiput, basically it shifted from like 11 o'clock to four o'clock. It's got a sort of rounded torque to it. Mm. So that could easily be, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Did that happen right. first or did the jaw happen first? 
So I'm just gonna see if he will, yep, his body's he's actually really open to it. He's like, yeah, put that back in place. So I'm moving four o'clock, kind of back to one o'clock, right? So we have 12 o'clock center, and then we've got his ox foot, instead of being rotated this way, we've kind of got it balanced right there in the middle. But I'm just he working. seems pretty open to this. Like, yeah, he, the fact, he feels it. Yeah, yeah. When you said he seems open, my heart got really stimulated, Aww. and I was like, yeah, he 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 really he really is. He's he yeah. He's so open. He doesn't seem like he is, but he's such an open being. Right. So we're getting done now. Our round nose band, kind of where either a bridle or a halter would be. And there is definitely like, it literally feels like a band of energy that was kind of stuck there. That really resonates because he's 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 really incredibly sensitive on his face. Uh, yeah. And the few times that I was able to touch his face, it was like, oh, he had so much relief. I could I could feel that but he does not, he's so sensitive about his face. He said, it's just, it just feels like, almost like if you had a deviated septum, right? And you can breathe, but you feel like there's still some kind of a little bit of a blockage. What's starting mm -hmm. to happen is he's staying all of this tissue down his nose, all the way down to the base. He said, mm. it's starting to feel like it's lighter. Gosh, that really rings true. <laughs> yeah, and it also feels too like the energy now is starting to circulate back up his head. So where, I don't wanna say he was totally stuck in his head, but like where he was feeling the restriction, <sighs> like it's feeling like there's just much greater um, ease of flow in the energy down through his whole nose. now. C1's a little high on the right towards his ear. Um, on the left, it's fine. So I'm just gently readjusting that. And he's got a lot of like, almost like ache, like tired ache, like when muscles are finally releasing and you understand how tight they actually were. He's got that going on up through his cheek and up into like the base of his eye and the side of his nose on the left. As soon as you went to see one, he uh -huh. took like a little trip step almost. Like it was like, oh, like, like he, like he, I, it, he could feel it. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. I, well, now he's blown out, which is great. I didn't catch it as much as you did, but I'm glad to hear that. All right, so C2 is okay, C3 is okay, C4. C4 is shifted in an interesting way. It's like C4 on the left is compressed, C4 on the right is up. So I'm just gonna rebalance that. Okay, so this is C4 rebalancing. There we go, good. Okay, C5 is okay. C6, has he ever had a chiropractic adjustment or no. anything of that nature? Okay. All right, so now I'm on C7. So C7 is definitely tight. On the left, it's pushing into his spine. On the right, it's kind of going down towards the floor, but also moving in towards the center of his spine. So I'm just gonna open up C7 and put that back in place for him. And he also seems to like the kind of guy that's sort of like, just like, so a golden retriever would say, focus on me, focus on me, focus on me. He's kind of yeah. like, don't really focus on me. But I'm wondering yeah. if that's actually going to shift. Yeah, you nailed it. He's yeah. like, don't focus on me, don't focus on me. And you'll turn around and he's like hiding behind the rock right next to you. That's Aww. his relationship, that's his relationship with. Okay. So many animals and people. That's okay. Well, some of it too, I notice honestly with animals, just like with humans, if we mm -hmm. get our bodies out of balance, 
it totally affects our neurochemistry. Yeah. Uh, what I've been observing over the past at least five years, but you know, as a been doing this for 25, is like when you get that body back in balance, it completely shifts brain chemistry. The fact that he's so shy and so uh -huh. aloof definitely feels connected to his trauma. Well, and it's interesting because it sort of feels too like as we're going through his body, and I'm on T12 right now, as we're going through his body, as that starts unwinding, it'll be really, really interesting to see what shifts in him without your typical like quote unquote training versus right. just letting the body unwind itself and see how far he chooses to go with that or how much more um, he's able to actually step into his being and his full presence. So based on what his injury is, I could definitely see T14 being a critical uh, area in his back where those muscles are gonna like figure out how to support his hip. So what will be interesting is as we go through the next four vertebrae and his thoracic and we get into his lumbar and his sacrum, this is where I think we're gonna find the most fascinating shifts that he's going to be able to make. So right now, I think he's, I get the sense that he's kind of like, okay, I know you're in there. It is kind of tight and I just want you to be gentle. And it's funny cause we're what? At least um, 600 miles away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet he's still like, just be gentle. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Leave and he's like, I'll just continue to chew, which this isn't normal for him right? to be walking around and eating right now at all. Yeah. Okay. He's usually okay. taking a nap right now. Like he's pretty consistent okay. in his behavior and his habits, I mean. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so him walking around and being with me and eating is not normal. That's awesome. I think he's honestly, I don't want to project anything, but I feel like he's going to come out of his shell in a much different way. One more one kind of feels pretty stuck in place. Like it's a, like, um, like we have nuts and bolts, right? There's a pretty mm -hmm. big bolt in there that's holding up that hip. That's, that's supporting that hip. It's a little more flexible on the right side, but it's really kind of, uh, I want to say somewhat his support system. So I'm going to that too. I'm just going to go very, very gently. And he's obviously, he's, I don't know if he's paying attention to something out in the road or he's kind of like, uh, yeah, I feel what you are doing. <laughs> and he's taking some really good breaths. Excellent. That's what we really want. Yeah. Because when you get injured like that, you literally will shut your breath down. Now I'm giving him very specific things, you know, very, very specific visuals based on what I'm finding in his body. Uh -huh. But I'm also sending energetically, I'm just sending from my cells to his cells, just the awareness of, hey, you know, we don't know what's possible. We don't know how much this can untwist, but just drink it all in like nutrition and then see how your leg feels. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. I mean, I'm just even looking at his body, but his whole being to me where it sort of felt like, you know, tough and like really contained something is happening. There's more of like a roundness, not just in his body, but in his personality. You know, mm. there's a softening somehow taking place for him, which I think is going to allow his vital energy to really remember like he's a happy, joyous, playful dude. Like, yes, mm -hmm. the injury sucked, you know, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have to stay locked into that if he doesn't want to. Okay, so I'm putting him in a healing grid. So he's going to be in that for at least 72 hours. And what we're going to do is just let him be, let him do his thing. You'll take video for us and just kind of, you know, give us some updates. And the rest of it, it's going to be up to him.
Okay, Liz, thank you so much. We look forward to um, following up and seeing how he's doing and how he's progressing. Yeah, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. And Merrick does too. Yeah. So welcome. All right, so it's been about a day and a half since our session with Merrick. And what I've been noticing is, I'm gonna zoom in on his foot. So he's he's actually putting weight on his, his left foot versus before he was always holding it cocked. So I've got it zoomed in. So this is what I've been noticing over the last day and a half is He's rarely holding it off the ground. So he put some more weight on it right there. And this is his norm. So like when he's eating or when he's standing, he's, he's tends to be putting weight on it, which is really cool. I haven't really noticed a change in his walk or necessarily a change in his um, behavior yet but I've definitely noticed him putting weight on it consistently. Hey, Merrick. Hi, friend. Hi. And I'm standing a lot closer to him right now. Really cool. All right, this is Merrick a week after his session. The biggest change I've noticed is that he's consistently putting weight on that back left leg. Hey, Merrick. And overall, Paul and I both have been noticing that he seems to have a lot more peace. Like this morning, I actually saw him rolling around in the dirt, which is something I don't see really often. He usually just kind of plops down and takes a nap for a while. So he was like really enjoying rolling back and forth and um, you know rubbing his back and his muscles and really trying to get all the way over which he can't quite do that. But he just seems to be generally more at peace and slightly more confident. I strongly caution people against paying for an hourly horse ride, or I offer you to really consider potentially what you're contributing to when you hire or, or pay someone to ride their horse. There are great outfitters out there that have a lot of integrity, but make sure that's who you're paying. Ask them questions about their horses and their mules. Ask them about how many brakes see how they respond to your questions look for things like are they muzzling their animals to get people on them all of those things indicate that those animals probably don't want to do that job and above all else have the courage to make the uncomfortable decision to perhaps forego a really fun day ride to promote better quality of care of these sacred beings you're a pretty special guy huh Thanks for watching today's episode of Animal Healer TV. We hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you learned about yourselves and your animals. We'd also love to hear what issues are you dealing with that you'd most like to see on the show. If you'd like to participate in an episode, please see the link below and share with us the issues that you're having with your animals. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Insta, and please feel free to share with your friends. Join us next week for another episode of Animal Healer TV, where we will explore quantum reality and see what else is possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, their health, and each other's hearts.